I've done a lot of work for you, and you still haven't paid me. Hi, my name's Darren, and I'm a professional friend. This frog here is my boss, and he's hired me to give you a review on the new game Here Comes Nico. And hopefully, after this review, he'll finally pay me what he owes me. Here Comes Nico is a cute 3D platformer developed by Netherlands-based studio Frog Vibes and published by a hat in time creator's Gears for Breakfast. It stars our main character Nico, who's run away from home to get a job as a professional friend. Your future frog boss Pepper has tasked you to improve the lives of the animals living in each level. Doing so will help you collect coins to pay your train fare on the way to your final job interview. When I heard the game describe itself as a cozy 3D platformer for tired people, I got excited and thought, this game must be for me. I'm tired all the time. And I love 3D platformers. I even once finished Donkey Kong 64 with 101% completion. For fun. I'm, I'm not bragging, okay? I'm, I'm providing context for my opinion. However, my feelings about the game are a little complicated. There's a lot to love about this game, but there are also some problems holding me back from giving it a completely unconditional recommendation. Let's start with the good. This game is filled to the brim with a fantastically goofy cast of characters overflowing with personality. Every single animal you talk to has something entertaining to say and I never get bored talking to them. How could I not like a cast of characters that includes business frogs? A terrifying horror hedgehog, three frogs stacked on top of each other to make a detective, and Handsome Frog. I love Handsome Frog. Unfortunately, where the writing isn't as strong is with the main character Nico. By collecting very well hidden bottles around the levels, you slowly learn about how Nico is feeling and why she ran away from home. It's an emotional story and provides a lot of context for what you're doing in the game. So it's confusing that all this context is locked behind difficult to find collectibles. At the end of every level, you do get some short story in the form of phone messages from your parents. However, without the context of the bottles, they're a little confusing and seem disconnected from the rest of the game. I wish the developers found a way to work more of the story into the main game itself. On a different note, the artwork for the game is stellar. The low poly look with paper cutout characters reminded me a lot of early Paper Mario games in the best way possible. My computer is absolute garbage, so to capture footage for this review, I had to turn down the resolution of the game. But the simplicity of the art style means it continues to look really good even at lower graphic settings. The music and breezy atmosphere of each level perfectly captures this relaxing, cozy vibe that is meant to feel good on a day where you just want to play something that will cheer you up. The gameplay is where my feelings are a little more complicated. Controlling Nico feels great. Her jumps might be floaty, but her dives are snappy and fast. You can chain them together to blast through levels and perform some pretty impressive feats of climbing. Unfortunately, I'll be honest, despite how well Nico feels to play, at first, I wasn't really having a lot of fun playing the game. There's this feeling that a lot of polish was missing, and there were some bugs. For example, I got stuck on a bench and had to quit the game to fix it. The letters you collect don't scale with resolution, so they get cut off on the screen if you're using lower settings. Despite using a controller, some of the tutorial prompts still showed keyboard buttons. And there's also this Tamagotchi-style minigame with a snail that doesn't really do anything. But worst of all, I wasn't really having fun collecting things. The levels seemed too small and there wasn't any challenge to the collecting process. There's no dying or getting hurt in Here Comes Nico. And to be fair, the game is supposed to be for tired people. It's meant to be relaxing, not challenging. But the act of collecting in a game isn't fun just because you've collected something. It's fun because it usually involves overcoming some form of challenge to get it. And here comes Nico. There isn't much to actually engage you in the collecting process. At first. 
When I hit the fourth level, Salmon Creek Forest, things started to click. This level is a lot larger than the previous levels and gives you a lot more to actually do. More puzzles, more characters, more mini games, and more ways to engage with the game. It also unlocks the ability to go back to previous levels to discover even more things that weren't there before. I was diving around at top speeds, jumping up mountains with ease, and scouring the landscapes for every collectible because I actually wanted to. It never does get that challenging, but I didn't care because I was enjoying my time in this cute little world with my weird frog boss. And after half the game, it finally makes collecting fun. I really wish the game showed its hand sooner because I was almost ready to give up on it, and I think others might. So overall, what do I think? Here Comes Nico truly is a charming game. It has an adorably breezy atmosphere, funny characters, and tons of style. It may not feel like it has a lot of substance at first, and it definitely is missing some polish that hopefully gets patched in, but give it time and your heart might warm up to it, just like mine did. And if you're looking for a laid-back entry-level 3D platformer, a playground of collectibles to run around in, or just a tired person who wants to spend time with some cute characters at the end of a long day, this might just be the game for you. And if you liked what you heard today, consider supporting us by hitting the like button, subscribing, and sharing with your friends. Thank you. What do you mean you didn't like it? You just told me I had to write a review. You didn't tell me what I had to say. I quit. <laughs>